Well, howdy there, Internet people. It's Bo again. So today is part two of How to Change the World by building community-based networks that will make you more independent. Uh, if you haven't watched that first video, go back and watch it because you kind of need that to understand what we're talking about. Otherwise, this is going to sound really weird, especially in the beginning. Um, <clears throat> a lot of the comments on Facebook were concerned about the limitations of these types of networks. The reason I first became interested in them and started really thinking about them was because of something called stay behind organizations. During the Cold War, NATO created these little networks all over Europe. And their job, as the name suggests, was to stay behind in the event of a Soviet invasion. What they did was they put people at railroad yards, hospitals, police stations, city hall, all kinds of different places. And they figured they needed to do it beforehand because they learned during World War II that if you waited until after the invasion, the Foreign Intelligence Service would be looking for new people in these places. So they had to get in place beforehand. Um, a lot of these guys were military, some of them. Some of them were intelligence, and, uh, but a whole lot of them were civilians. And I want you to think about what NATO believed they could accomplish. They thought they could basically ferment a revolution from inside the country and they could run resistance operations. That entails a lot. <laughs> that entails a whole lot. You're talking about treating the wounded, gathering intelligence, running arms, maybe engaging in military operations, uh, sabotage, all kinds of stuff. All of which carries an amazing amount of logistics behind it if you actually want to accomplish it. NATO was convinced that these little networks could do it and they're set up the same way. It's a group of people come together for a cause, they accomplish it, and then they go about on about their lives. Now, if you know anything about stay behind organizations, you're probably going, you got to talk about Gladio, Bo. <laughs> yeah, okay, so <laughs> there was one of these called Gladio that went off the rails. Um, <laughs> they, they got way out of hand. Uh, even without an invasion, they carried out assassinations, all kinds of stuff. <laughs> um, not the best example, but that was one of like 50 of these things. And the thing is, though, if you take away the horror of this situation, um, it shows you exactly how effective they are and what they can accomplish. The logistics behind some of the stuff that they carried out was amazing. <laughs> Um, again, I'm not saying that what they did was good. <laughs> I'm just saying that it proved the theory. Um, so are there limitations? Sure. But they're determined by the people in the network. Anything is possible if you wish hard enough. At least that's what Peter Pan said. Um, so how do you go about starting one of these things for purposes other than, you know, resisting an invasion? Well, you have to start off with a real self-evaluation. What do you have to offer? And what do the people in your immediate circle have to offer that you can kind of use to begin? Because that's how it has to start. It has to start with you offering to do stuff and then in the hopes of it being reciprocated. Um, and when you're doing that, you got to be real honest with yourself. Okay, yeah, you, you built a birdhouse, but are you really a carpenter? You know, that type of thing. And then you have to get over your own hang-ups. Um, and we see a lot of that in the comments. And we're, we're going to talk about the three main ones. Everybody has something to offer a network like this. Everyone. Every single person. Uh, there was a comment on Facebook from somebody that had a medical issue. And that's and the the overriding theme of it is something that comes from older people a lot, and it's basically you know, at this point in my life I'm broke. I I am broken. I can't go out and do anything. I pretty much stay at home. Okay, but you've got decades of life experience. You have decades of experience at something, and that expertise is valuable. Sometimes it's not actually going out and swinging a hammer. It's providing the advice to make that easier. Don't sell yourself short. You know, 
most cultures actually look upon older people as wise because, well, we are. And then there was a comment from uh, a younger guy. I want to say he was 17, 16, 17, something like that. He's like, man, I want to do this, <laughs> but can I do it at my age? Absolutely. Absolutely you can. In fact, the story in the last video about the guy with the chainsaw coming out, uh, I met him as a teenager. We worked at a fast food joint together. <laughs> we just happened to, uh, you know, we went on about our lives and traveled similar paths and we kept running into each other. And as fate would have it, you know, here we are 20 years later and uh, he lives, I don't know, 45 minutes away. And so you can definitely start it now. You can definitely start it now. And the thing is, even though you don't have any skills to offer, it may seem that way. It may seem, I don't, I'm a kid. I don't, I don't have anything to offer. Oh, yeah, you do. Another guy in my network's named Keith. And somebody else I met as a teenager. This spring, his 17-year-old boy is going to come out and uh, help me put a fence around the property. He doesn't know how to put up a fence, but he will by the time we're done. See, at your age, <laughs> you have a lot of energy. And that's very helpful to people my age. <laughs> um, and it, it, it's very helpful to you. Because if you were to start this now and were to use social media to help link up with other people in your community that need something, you can learn so much. You can get a free education. You can gather this wide array of skills just by saying, yeah, I'll help you do that. You know, he's going to come out here and have no idea how to do this. And by the time we're done, because it is a, it's, it's an ordeal, um, he's going to know how to do it. And he's going to have that skill mastered. So even beyond the fact that he's kind of, you know, putting his chips into this little network of ours, he's getting something out of it right away. Knowledge. He's learning. And that's, that's. That's extremely empowering, especially when you're talking about becoming more independent. So yes, you can do this. When you're dealing with people that you're meeting on social media, I don't have to tell you, but I'm going to. Make sure you check them out. Be safe. Um, the other group of people that have a concern is introverts. You know, this is easy if you're a social butterfly. Not so much if you're an introvert. Yeah, but if you're an introvert, you probably have a job that allows you to be alone most times, which means you probably have skills that other people don't have. I'm gonna guess, I mean, you use social media, okay? So you can network that way, at least in the beginning, build a, a digital community, very similar. And maybe you can provide computer services or whatever it is that you do via that method. So you don't have to actually meet these people. And then as time goes on and you interact with them online, you may actually end up meeting them. Uh, just an idea to get it out there. Everybody, though, everybody has something to offer a network like this. That There are no exceptions to that. <laughs> everybody. Um, so how do you recruit people to join your network? Well, obviously, you start off with your immediate circle. That, that's where it begins. And that could be your friends, your coworkers, people from school. Um, maybe you're in a club that focuses on some hobby and you can expand it beyond that. You can look on social media. Um, you know, there's a lot of local based Facebook groups and you could look in those. Then, uh, I mean, another good place to find people that would be interested in this is activist communities. Those people look for the helpers, you know? Those people that are out there already doing it, getting nothing in return most times, those people are definitely gonna be interested in something like this. Um, and if you just can't, for whatever reason, apply any of that, you can look into something called Time Banks. Now, people on Facebook are already familiar with this because that link showed up over and over and over again. Time Banks do have some limitations. Um, they're mainly in, in larger cities, and it doesn't always 
translate into actual network building, but it gets you out there, and, and eventually you can find the people to build those networks. Um, it's kind of, like I said, it's kind of like a Craigslist for this type of thing. Um, the other thing you have to decide is the structure. How are you going to structure your, your organization? Um, I know a group of Army guys, and what they do is they've got poker chips with their names on them. <laughs> and when, you know, <laughs> when somebody comes and does a favor for you, you give them a poker chip. And later on, they've got that poker chip with your name on it. And that's kind of how their system works. There's a storm coming. And a branch is falling. Uh, so there's no formal agreement, there's no money changing hands or anything like that, but there's a marker. And that's one way to do it, is to engage in some kind of barter system that, that's there. The other way to do it is set it up kind of on a more social level, where uh, everybody's involved and everybody just makes the commitment to help if they can. Rule 303. If you have the means at hand, you have the responsibility. That type of thing. Um, and then you can go further than that. You can turn it into monthly meetings. You can engage in community service in your community that helps get the word out about your network and kind of shows that you're a group of people worthy of being around. Um, there, there, there was a group set up. I think it was, I think it was set up by a guy named Rick. Um, I get asked to participate in a lot of activist groups, and I normally don't for a whole bunch of reasons, but um, you know, I, I help as I can, but I don't ever join a group. One of these groups, the first two guys I met from it, they really impressed me, so I was like, well, I'll go check them out. And uh, I was like, okay, so when, where do I go? How do I find out? You know, how do I meet up with you guys? And they're like, well, on you know, Thursday, we're feeding the homeless here, on Saturday we're gonna be doing this, on Sunday this, next Tuesday this, and it just, it was a list. Rather than just saying, oh, well, we have a monthly meeting on the 27th. What that told me was that these people were active. And it wasn't, hey, come to this monthly meeting and we're gonna talk, it's like, hey, show up and help. Yeah, that's, I liked that. <laughs> um, and when you're creating something like this, those are the kind of people you want to attract. You want to attract people that are less about talking, more about actually getting something done. And that's one way to demonstrate that that's who you are, and that's how you're going to attract them. Um, normally, people that are busy, that are active, they're going to be more likely to come out if it's something they're certain isn't going to be a waste of their time. So if, if there's already a goal that they, they can get behind, like feeding the homeless. You, they're going to be more likely to come than going to have coffee. Uh, so those are the basics of, of how to set one up. Now, if you have any questions, ask. And the cool thing is in the comment section, there's other people answering the questions. I, that's, that's fantastic. <laughs> um, this little series is going to continue because not just can these little organizations and these little networks help you with the everyday things. Uh, it can be translated into things much larger than that. You know, these things, yeah, there is that barter system in play, that network of favors that can exist. But it can also help you become more financially independent by kind of backing each other up. Um, and we're going to talk about that in the next video because there is... Most of the people who are interested in this type of thing are of limited means because they see the, the need for it. And we're going to try to talk about some ways to maybe help uh, increase your means. And I'm not talking about don't go to Starbucks and save the $5. I'm talking about things that might actually help. So anyway, it's just a thought. Uh, Y'all have a good night.